someday things are gonna get easier. Someday things will get brighter. This is the J.R. Hendrick Texan Consort. Gentlemen, podcast is done in narrated format. Hang tight. Enjoy. Welcome to the Swainfield Barbecue, where we have a situation between a lost girlfriend and a debate. <laughs> Now, the top song for October 28th, 1995 was Fantasy by Mariah Carey. Also, the album was singing, I'm going to tell you saying. Been spending most of our lives living in the gangster's paradise. Been spending most our lives living in the gangster's paradise. <laughs> Reminds us of college days, doesn't it, Jimmy? Sure does. Okay, um. Now, we start on the 22nd. It's 6 p.m. Back at the ranch. Christine is. She's giggling. She's on Happy Fried. She's on the phone with a friend, Brenda. Can you believe it? Dave Morgenthal, his girlfriend broke up with him, and he asked me to go to the November dance. So she's giggling, and and, and Betsy walks in our room. Christine, baby, this is the happiest I've seen you in a long time. I was just sleeping when you do that. I bet, because when she went to D.C., she wasn't happy. When she came back, she wasn't happy. And Christine's like, Brenda, hold up. I need to talk to my mother just for a little bit. And and Christine says, You didn't know this, Mama. You don't want to wait to Lubbock to take care of Grandma. But Friday, the infirmary and the school decided to let me go early. Mike Fields kicked me out of the infirmary and called me a car service. And and Bessie says, Are you are you sure, Christine, that you're alright? And she says, Of course I am. Now Brenda, I understand that Jason Fillmore asked you out. I warn you, be careful. Now, just then, Bessie's cell phone rings, and it's Jr. And she says, "Jr., give me a, you know, give me a sec to go downstairs. I'll talk to you in the living room." So she goes into the living room and pours herself a beer, and talks to Jr. And she said. Something's happening for you four days from buying that stock and already know that you're about to take Hendrick Foods private. JR, you just augmented our cash reserves. Tell me what's going on. And Jared's like, it's going to be all right, Mama. I know what I'm doing. Yes, he knows what he's doing, but it's, it was for the wrong reasons back then. And Bessie says, but I don't understand how, Jr. When your daddy gave you Bristol Monarch, I never thought that you would take one of, uh, take over one of the companies and, and buy the stock and with that, stock add hindered assets. Could you tell me what possible reasons you have for this? I know you have a reason. And he says, one of the best reasons in the world. Mama, I want my girl back. And 
Oh, uh, Betsy's like, well, I don't understand. She says, Mama, it's simple. I bought that stock of Hendrick Foods. The Game of Fortune. Because I want Karen Crowder back. And Betsy's like, Honey, I told you to leave her alone. I watched the society page. She's moved on. And so said you. Your daddy's not going to be happy about this. And Jared's like, well, he might, may not like it. But over time, I think he'll understand. And she said, well, he shouldn't know how you accomplish this. And Jared's like, mama, he knows. You know, he may be busy politicking all over the country, but he knows. And Betsy says, okay, he may know, but he won't like it. However, I know you have it in your heart, eventually, to change your reason. Because I know your granddad raised you to be a gentleman. You're not meant to inherit Hendrick Hoyle. And if you didn't say these successes, you're better than Hendrick Hoyle. You're not meant to inherit Hendrick Hoyle. So she's kind of talking, you know, sweet to him, you know, sweet mama. You know, uh, <laughs> someday things are going to be easier. Someday things will get brighter. Okay, so it's the next day. I believe, yes, and outside the Eliza R. Snow School of Social Work, Karen meets with her grandfather, and, and she says, and he says, I'm sad for Brad, but it's the right thing, and Brent says, uh, Karen says, but, Gran but Grandpa, don't be such a wuss pacifist. If I didn't stand up, he keep pursuing me and smothering me. The next one is going to be J.R. And our grandfather's, you know, saying in the Karen world, he says, Karen, ashamed of me for this, but I used to make deals with his grandfather. I'll talk to Mike Fields and get him to let JR alone, to let, to tell JR to let you alone. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. Christine is in her algebra class, you know, working on some real numbers and all that stuff. And she gets a text from Betsy that her, her father is coming into Gainesville. See, Betsy flew back to Dallas to be with Grandma. Okay, so it's 1.30 p.m., uh, back in Fort Worth. It looks like Charles is, uh, Sarge is not going to get the money, so he decides to speak to Kyle. And, uh, the new middle one would do it, so Sar Sarge takes Kyle to sell his end of the shield, and they call it to Michael Singer. To take over the deal. Okay, so it's 3 p.m. Central. Frank is in a law office. Uh, almost like a boardroom meeting with a consort. And it's Mrs. Michelson. To discuss her case of copyright infringement. Uh, on the blogger. <laughs> She, she hints, you know, that she's kind of like hitting on, on Frank, saying, well, you know, I'm getting a divorce. And who better to help with a copyright suit than a young, fine, good, strong man like you? You see, he's getting his girlfriend, and I'm getting money from this lawsuit. <laughs> and, you know, she's like, I always... Depending on the kindness of a good intellectual property law intern, you know, she, it, it's obvious. And she's giving a pass to Frank. 
<laughs> now, about the same time, um, Jim arrives at the Hendrick Estate in, in, in Gainesville. He's seeing Betsy for the first time in three weeks. And she's rushing out to hold him because she's like, oh man, thank God. And she says, do you know that JR bought all the stock for Hendrick Foods? And Jim says, I know. And he said, you, but Betsy's like, well, do you know the real reason? And Jim lights up, he lights up the cigar. They're going to sit down in, in the uh, sun room. He says, I know why. <laughs> and he uh, told JR to tell me to go to hell. And this is like, no, he didn't want to say it. And Jim says, well, I know. I know what's going on. Why otherwise? He wants Karen back. Uh, his precious girl. You know, he's kind of getting angry. His precious girl. Uh, she going to throw him away like a rag doll. I told him to stop. I also heard from Karen's mother that she ain't even interested in Brad no more. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so it's 2.30 p.m. Uh, Christine is pulled right out of school early to talk to Dr. Conrad, and she's basically saying, you've been a good child, you've been a good kid, I'm releasing you from my care. Well, it's, it's obvious, you know, her migraine stress is over. She let everything out. She's, she's back to normal kid. But now it's 7.30. Jim is having a lovely stag dinner with Senator Michigan Senator Alex Romy. Of course, JR's in the library trying to call. And, of course, he ain't answering. And that has got to be a form in, in JR's side. It was hard. I wanted to talk to Daddy. Okay, so now we're on the 24th and 25th. It's 12.30. And JR is getting out of mass communications law class at Smith Hall. And just finished a phone conversation with Christine. Um... Who said that Aunt Uncle Tom and Aunt Diane were at the ranch? And Brent stops him and says, "Hey, three three days left of freedom." You know, Brent's all happy and everything, and Jr. like, "Freedom for Jr. and his friends, as much as they want it." So, so th that's the thing, Jr. Why did you refer to yourself in the third person? Let's see. No hear from Daddy. I wanted to show that I was autonomous again. I did that from time to time. Don't fault me for that. Okay. All right. So it's one p.m. at the ranch. Kyle is sulking, and he's getting the bulls ready for another rodeo. At Elk City, Oklahoma. Clara, Oklahoma. Dallas, Austin, Carrollton. Mobile Falls. And then back to Austin, New Brunswick, Corpus Christi. Then back to Dallas. And then back to the ranch on Sunday, November 5th. Okay. So... Reluctantly, he's agreed to take Madison, and the kids were going to stay with her, Madison's mother in Midland. Okay, so now it's 4 p.m., and this is where it gets interesting. He's in the study lounge at, at Gordon Hall, and Dr. Kinghorn walks in, and he's discussing things with him. He says, he says, all right. I've been following you for the past year, Jr. You get well. You did well in the spring of '94. 
uh, with Mrs. C- Mrs. Crider out of your life. Granted, you met a C in geology and Spanish, but in government and business professional speech, you made uh, B's. And Gail's, Gail's like, he's all down cast. He says, I want Karen back, okay? So that might be, uh, so she might be seeing somebody else. But I don't think that, that little bit, uh, no teller put her on a pedestal like she needs to be. And Dr. Kinghorn says, I, I need to give you a warning. You've been selected to do a debate this weekend at Duke's University College. So I need you to be on your dead level best. All right, so it's 6 p.m. Christine's back in the room. And she's she's dressed in like in a gown. And, of course, her loins and everything look, look cool, but everything, chest and belly button, ah, oh, it's a damn 90s thing, Jimmy. But, Jerry, your mama don't like that. No, she don't. And, of course, she's... She's on the phone. Uh, she's on the phone uh, talking to Dave Morgenthau. And she, she says, it's, it's like I'm a dancer, too. I know, huh? Yeah, well, Brenda Fox was dumb enough to ask out Jason Fillmore. Sure reminds me of my oldest brother, who was such a dork. I mean, chasing this little feminist imp named Karen Crowder. I've seen pictures of a, of a girlfriend he had after she dumped him the first time. And she's a hell of a lot better looking. Okay, and so bad, see, she's like, Mad. She's like, Christine, get off the phone. Get dressed and downstairs right now. You know, this is like the stern mama voice. <laughs> Christine Ryan Henry, get your butt over here now. Come here to me. Sounds like my mama. When <laughs> you're in trouble, hey, you knew come, come to mama. Because he was in trouble. Most likely, you, you had to comply or get your butt whipped. <laughs> Indeed, we grew up in, in traditional conservative households, right? Oh, yeah. See, see, see. And so, okay, so Christine, she gets dressed, goes downstairs, and she gets on the phone. Of course, they go in there, and Chelsea walks in the living room, and Betsy, she told Kyle she now has the money to help with his deal with him and Sarge. But Kyle is sulking. And he just gives her the cold shoulder. Forget it. Forget it. Stupid Kyle. <laughs> okay, Gail, we need to do a double sound effect if you don't mind. So we've got to get ready for it. Sadly. Um, crazy Christine. And stupid uh, stupid Kyle. No doubt, huh? That's what I say. Okay, so. So Betsy walks into the room. Uh, Betsy puts on the uh, speakerphone for Sarge to be on the phone along with JR. Uh, along with Kyle, Elizabeth Marie. And she says, I think wherever you are, whether you're on the ranch or not, you need to sit down. And Jared's like, Mama, I know what you must be thinking, and I'm sorry. 
And Betsy's like talking all sides of me. It's okay, Gerald, sit down. It's okay. Um, she gets everyone to break the sit down, and then she says, Jim left J.R. Bristol Mog, but I've spoken to him before I flying back here from Dallas. We need to have our board meeting. Elizabeth Marie, how do you vote on the president of Bristol Monarch? And she says, I vote for JR. And and you, Sarge? I vote for JR. Christine, how do you vote? I abstain. Kyle, how do you vote? Out. And she says, uh, JR, how do you vote? I vote my turn to stay. But consider this, Mama. You can vote in any way you want. You want. I don't deserve it. Maybe especially if I find out that Karen is seeing somebody else. No, JR. I'm going to vote my 20 shares in Andrew's 10 that you stay in. Thank you, Aunt Betsy. Elizabeth Marie says happily. And Kyle's saying, he's like, oh, thanks a lot, Mama. And she says, I'm going to ask a, ask a special provision. Christine's shares need to be considered. And so I'm going to do a vote for chairman of the board in the interim. Mike Fields. So everyone leaves the room. Uh, Sarge gets off the phone. And she says, now, JR, I'm sorry. But with all your deciding, you didn't get what you want. I saw on the society page. Karen, Karen is seeing someone right now. Not you and not Brad. And so the board meeting, uh, uh, they exchange some brief I love you. And goodbye. And JR hangs up the phone. He sums on the big cry. He wants Karen back bad. I don't know why I did. Seven uh seven AM. JR is back from breakfast at the Holy Spirit Club. And when his his dorm telephone rings and it's his mother. And she says, Good morning, Mama. You didn't have to vote for me. Jarrah said. And so Betsy gets kind of stern. It was my vote of confidence. And Jarrah's like, I still don't understand why. It's because you're a gentleman, Jr. Your daddy will never learn. However, you do. So I'm asking you this for a favor. Please leave Karen alone. But whoever she's with Look after her. He'll break her heart. That's for you to leave alone and for her to find out. Now to change the subject, I'm taking the helicopter to see you in Lubbock again tonight. You have debate practice and I better see you perform your best. Okay, so it's 9.50 a.m. After her 9 a.m. class, uh, social class, Karen meets again with her grandfather. Apparently, he had talked to Mike Fields on the phone, and Mike, he promises to find a way to sit down with Jr. to tell him to leave her alone. But that's not all. Nicodemus Foods is, is now owned totally by the Hendrick family. I mean, he says, he says, but that's not all. Nicodemus Foods is totally owned by the Hendrick family. Now Brad, he's on his way back from a presentation of economics at Harvard. Now, what are you going to do this weekend? And she says, uh, 
Dull his work. So I thought I would fly to Dallas Fort Worth, stay in Aunt Lisa's uh, condo, and maybe go to Duke's University College. There's a social work uh, forum not far from where Jared's debate is. And the grandpa's like, You're playing with fire. I need you to be careful. Okay, so it's 11 a.m. It's in Elk City, Oklahoma. They just got there. And they're unloading uh, the bull. And Madison, she's losing her cool. Because, you know, all the way to Elk City, Kyle's been silent, not saying a damn word. And she's like, damn it, Kyle. Why don't you just talk to me? And, and, and Kyle was sulking. I'm just a dumb hick ranch hand. Is that what you think of me? And she said, I never wanted to be on this damn ranch in the first place. And I don't want to go, don't like having to go to these rodeos. And, and, and Kyle's being dumbass. He says, we don't want to to get pregnant. And she said, you know what? I've had enough of your crap. I'm taking a bus to see my brother in Wichita Falls. And Kyle's like, then get the hell away from me. I want you to give Kyle the bell now. Give him the bell. For, for being such a dumbass. Double bell. For, 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 for being such a dumbass. Yeah, I can see why. I mean, come on. Kyle, get a grip. Okay, at the same time, 1 p.m., Christine is going to see Dr. Bertrand. He says, you seem to be a lot better these days. But I may have uh, some bad news. There might be some tissue, scar tissue near where the migraine was in the brain. I talked to your uh, grandmother's doctor, Dr. Theodore. And the doctors in Dallas found some tissue on your grandmother's brain from cancer. Now, I'm not saying you're at risk, but I think we need to get doing an MRI. <laughs> and Christine's like, oh my God. Okay, so it's 7.30 p.m. at uh, and the debate practice is at the School of Law at Texas Tech. And J.R. is following in debate with C.V. Coleman as Betsy sits in and listens, having received the phone call uh, from Thomas saying that uh, Elizabeth was being transferred uh, Oh, she, is, is she being transferred? back to Lubbock for a few days. And, and the debate's over and she turns and she hugs JR. You did it, JR. You did it. And Jack, Jack Davies walks over and shook uh, Bessie's hand. He did nice. And Stoney says, he beat, out, he beat the pants out of CB. And, and CB said, Miss Betsy, I do what I can to keep Taylor on mine. And Betsy says, Jim would be happy with all of you. Because you see, you're saving JR from more trouble than he would have had with Charlie Nation. Basically, she's being nice. And look, you're saving jail for himself. But I have to say, see, you don't know the Hendrick family. Brent, you do. And Brent says, "Ma'am, I apologize for drawing Jr. out, but it was for his own good." And Bessie's like, "Look, you don't have to apologize to me." 
you know the fa you know the family and how we are we are Hendrix we compete together we fight together we stick together we can't be beat <laughs> okay so there we go Okay, so it's 9 a.m. the 27th. Connie arrives back on campus and is offered a chance uh, to go to lunch with her cousin Frank. She wants to take a stop, a step of faith to see JR, but Frank advises otherwise. <laughs> step of faith. I'm taking a step. Yeah. Taking a step. Taking a step of faith. And walking out on the promises God made. Taking a giant. Leap in the air. Stepping out on nothing. And finding something there. And telling the doubt to wait. I'm taking a step of faith. Okay, so there we go. Fun times here. So Frank, Frank leaves uh, for a little while, and Connie goes to the dorm to get Brent a call. Uh, Front TV at Tibbet for this thing for her senior year. Alyssa Marie had decided to bow out of the debate team. <clears throat> okay, 3 p.m. The private jet carrying uh, the debate team departs from Lubbock International Airport for DFW International Airport. Uh... Most of the team would be staying at the hotels where J.R. would get special permission to spend the night with his mother who had returned to Dallas uh, having received reports from the neurologist about Grandma Lisa. They had decided to transfer her back to Dallas for one more deal. No, they decided to keep her in Dallas. 7.30 a.m. Okay, this is the morning of the 28th. JR is sitting down having breakfast in the sunroom of the Hendrick Estate in Gainesville, Texas. And Betsy walks in. And she says, you look like you haven't stayed, you haven't slept all night. And JR's like, no, I ain't. And she said, and she said, You've got to keep your eye on the ball, which is today's debate. You want to keep Bet's presence chair with Hendrick Foods and Bristol Marks, which I know you do. You follow through with this debate. Win or lose. If you give it your all and your best, you are the better man. You're the better gentleman. But she said, I understand. Something else I think you ought to know. I don't want you pursuing that girl. And Gerald's like, Mama. I want when I came home when I come home tonight, you'll be proud of me. Okay, so it's ten AM. This is the Grand Hall uh, in Saint in San Juan Hall. Okay. And Mike Field processes JR. He's gonna I'm gonna ask you a favor. I need you to leave Karen alone. She's here, but not for you. And JR's like, 
She's gonna break my heart. Just give me a minute. She brushes past and goes towards Karen. Karen, I know. Uh, you're not rooting for me. But let's talk. And her grandpa's like, so she don't want to talk to you. And she's like, Grandpa, it's all right. Guess what? And she says, all right. I give it a share. You're tenacious. But you're not going to get me back. Now what do you want? And Jerry's like, fine, fine. My focus is on you. But I give it about a month's time. And I know the truth. If you're seeing someone else, it will break my heart. And two, but I'll let you go. So, so Mike Field wrestles and grabs Jared's arm. Come on, Jared, let's go. Now, at the same time, Christine is at she's at Alliance um, Hospital Clinic in Midland, going through her MRI. Now, back to the debate hall. Uh, the moderator comes to the stand. Welcome to the Duke's University College Public Affairs Debate. I'm H.R. Barker, Professor of Public Affairs. Our first debate this after, this morning is whether Reverend Isaiah Friedland, Friedman could be supportable for Congress in Virginia. Arguing for is James Ryan Hendrick, Jr., a senior at Texas Tech University, studying in public affairs. Arguing against is Brian Johnson, a law student at Baylor University. Just as J.R. goes from uh, the middle of the auditorium to the stand, Betsy walks into the auditorium. Good day. Today's issue. Have to stand for limited government. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. But Christine is back at the ranch. She goes home early and it's is greeted by Thomas and, and Diane Amy Kathleen. Thomas would be flying out today to go to Dallas to pick up Grandma Elizabeth and bring her back to the ranch. Christine is talking to Amy Kathleen and Diane about her date next weekend with David Morgenthau. So, okay, with that, Amy Kathleen... She knows Christine Scott guy has a learner's friend in it. So she gets in to the passenger seat of Christine's new car, a nineteen ninety four Ferrari. Um that she got from Mike Fields. And with Amy Kathleen as the adult driver, she peels out in the driveway and Diane walks out to front. Um Christine's driving. I guess that Christine's driving. Christine was never close to her Aunt Diane. But Diane was often asked when the family was in El Paso to check on Christine and JR. Okay, so 2 p.m. JR wins a debate along a chance to win a stipend of six thousand dollars a month. So now JR has decided for this particular one um he's gonna look for a winner's tune if you don't mind. Get this crazy thing going. come on, get over here. Alright.
Oh, I better know why. All right, now we're trying. All right, maybe the volume's <laughs> crazy phone. Yeah. So there we go, folks. That with that, and we haven't drank Pepsi, so we need to drink a Pepsi to celebrate Jr. winning his debate. <laughs> Let's crack open this thing. He wins his debate. He's bought ah. Uh, Nicodemus Foods. It's not Nicodemus Foods no more. It's Hendrick Foods. And with that, I give it 4.3 Pepsis and $6,000 for winning a debate. I give it 4.3 Pepsis plus a look at Karen Crowder one more time. JR, I gotta give you the bell for that. Not saying I'm on her back, I know, but you still need school. Alright, I hope you enjoy that. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the adventure. This is the James Hendrick Empowerment Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. Because it gets a little bit more interesting from here. See you next Friday night.